I'm not chasing after hits. I'm just chasing after my heart. Um, and, and, and I push myself harder. I wake up early every morning and I write. I stay up late, I write. It, 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 I never stop working and trying to become a better writer, a better singer, a better artist. And I want to make music that has meaning, music that makes a difference in someone's life. We all have those moments where we need a little encouragement to get through our day. Someone to remind us that we are not alone. Find peace. Embrace joy. Seek God daily. Welcome to Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. Today, we're talking with Texas country musician Aaron Watson. Aaron is a man of deep conviction and passionately dedicated to his family, his fans, and his faith. Today, he tells us how he desires to use his music to spread hope and joy. Earlier this year, Aaron released a new album called Aaron Watson Live at the World's Biggest Rodeo Show to help victims of Hurricane Harvey. Now, he and his family are filling our hearts with cheer thanks to their brand new album, An Aaron Watson Family Christmas. He also tells us why he's so transparent with his fans about the joys and heartaches he's faced and how he's able to find God's peace through it all. And be sure to stay with us until the end of our show to learn how you can watch the world premiere of Aaron's music video for She Stared at Him All Night, an original song from An Aaron Watson Family Christmas. My name's Aaron Watson. Um, uh, I'm a dad, a husband, a Christian, um, a big screw up at times, and uh, I have a band. And uh, we've been playing shows associated with the Houston Rodeo for probably like, I don't know, maybe 15 plus years. Always a smaller side stage, the kind of after party shows. So to get the opportunity to get up on the big stage, the rotating stage in front of like 70,000 people. Um, it was such an honor. I tell people for a Texas artist, that's like a golfer getting the green jacket, the masters. I mean, for a Texas artist getting to play the Houston rodeo, you know? And um, so we, we were able to record the entire show, DVD, you know, the music. Um, and first of all, I just kind of wanted to do that for myself. I mean, it's just like to capture that moment in time. Like I remember telling myself in 2003 or four that man, in a few years, I'm going to get on that stage. I didn't realize it was going to be like 14, 15 years later, but, um, it was a special night. I had my mom and dad were there, lots of family, my wife, my kiddos. And, uh, it's a night I'll never forget. And I was so thankful that we got to capture that you know, not just the audio, but the video. And we'd planned on putting it out uh, later that year, but that's when um, Hurricane Harvey hit the South Texas coast in Houston as well. And just the timing didn't seem right. So we just kind of put it on the back burners. And at some point I just kind of figured it was, it was never gonna come out. And then we came up with the idea of what if we put the album out on the one year anniversary of the hurricane hitting the South Texas coast? Because when there's billions of dollars of damage, millions of people affected, 12 months later, it's not all better now, you know? And, and it will probably take a decade or more f for, for people to recover. I mean, I've literally met people that here they are a year later and they still don't have a home. I mean, gosh, we've just seen, we've seen, especially Houston go through so many things. And Houston always gets the, the spotlight put on it, you know. But the, you know, the more we started looking into it, you know, there's like 41 counties were affected. So we wanted to make sure that we paid attention to everyone. But it, it was, it's, the, it's been a big year for recovery, so, in this day and age, with media, you know, it's all about the moment. And then 
they move on to the next big story. And often that leaves people kind of in the shadows and they get forgotten. So we just thought it'd be a great opportunity to, to give back. I mean, Texas is home. I mean, I'm a Texas artist. I mean, you know, I think we've played 41 states and 11 countries in the last three or four years. So I love sharing my brand of music with people around the world, but Texas is home. You know, my mom's from Houston. So um, it was really nice to be able to uh, have that opportunity to help a few people out. Cowboys and cowgirls, those are my people. And we've been playing rodeos for a long time. And there's some of my favorite events. There's a difference in how those people that are involved with rodeo, stock show, there's a difference how, in how those people treat others versus the rest of the world. I mean, there's so much kindness and love and uh, I just, I absolutely, I love playing anything associated with the Western world. And um, we've been playing the National Finals Rodeo now for, I mean, over 10 years. So, I mean, it's, it's for, for me, I mean, it's just a part of life. It always uplifts me to play those kind of events. I mean, sometimes, to be honest with you, you know, when I'm traveling all over uh, the nation and I'm tired and we're playing dance halls and bars, honky tonks, or these music rooms and the insides of them are painted black and you're going down into the green room and it smells like mildew. You know, you're just kind of like, ugh. But then you play these rodeos and there's usually fairs and rides and fried foods and kids everywhere. There's just such a, a positive vibe going on. So I just, I love anything and everything um, associated with the Western world. And what I love about, what I love about that culture is in a world where everything is changing, these people are staying true to their roots, how they were raised, you know, and, and, and it's admirable. And it's, it sets a great example for me that, you know, okay, the rest of the world, they're doing their thing, you know? And, and I think that that's, you know, we talk about Jesus calling. I mean, we're called to be different. And, and that's one thing I really admire about the, those cowboys and those cowgirls. I mean, they're not perfect. I mean, no one is. But uh, I, I really, I just really love so many things about them. They set a great example for a lot of us. So we went over to uh, the UK. It was our eighth international tour. We played a festival in Ligashire, and we were supposed to open for Carrie Underwood, and she got sick, so we had to headline it. And it was a ton of fun, but uh, we, we love love the people over there. They have a great appreciation for music. Uh, they love cowboys. They love Texas. They love country music. You know, I think a lot of those people, you know, think that I ride a horse to the grocery store to buy my milk. So, um, but I love that. You know, I, I, we absolutely love it. That's not so different than back here in the States. I mean, you know, go to Boston or New York. I mean, it's a, those people are so busy. I don't think they really have time to stop and smile or talk, but you go outside those cities into the smaller communities and it's more laid back. It's such a honor and a pleasure to get to go over there and not just work, but I kind of have a vacation, you know? So it's fantastic. I took my wife with me this last round and um, we, after we played the festival, we stayed in a castle that night and had a lovely breakfast the next morning, took the train back into London. We stayed in this real, you know, fancy, part of the city and and uh, sh she went shopping nonstop for three or four days and the first day I wore my boots and um, I think 20 something thousand steps later because she does her steps 
my feet. Like I almost like couldn't walk. I didn't realize what I was getting into. My feet are still aching weeks later. Aaron is a devoted husband and father. He gives us a peek into what it's like to be in the Watson family. I cannot reiterate enough how imperfect I am. And if you think that I'm all talk and I'm not being honest, we could interview my wife on the next episode and she could give you all the dirt. She's a much better human being than me. I mean, she literally walks throughout our house during the day. She might be washing dishes or folding clothes and taking them to different bedrooms. And as she's walking throughout the house, I can hear her humming little gospel songs. You know, well, people love her. I mean, she's got like 100,000 followers on Instagram. People love her, they kind of like me. It is what it is. God's blessed me with four beautiful babies. They all love music. Um, the oldest boy, Jake, he's 12, and he honestly plays guitar like a grown man. The boy just loves to play that guitar. He loves baseball, loves basketball. Uh, he's playing football. His younger brother, Jack, Jack is 10, and uh, he's a hoot. Truly has one of the, the kindest, sweetest hearts of any human being. I mean, when he was little, 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 I said, Jack, you are so awesome. And I mean, he's four, five. And he said, no, dad, only God is awesome. And I was just like, well, you little preacher. So sorry, you know, but I love that about him. And then there's, there's little sister, and I know you're not supposed to have a favorite, but I love her about this much more than the boys. That's because I know someday they're gonna meet some girl, get married, and they're gonna forget about their old man. But she has promised me that she will never forget about me and that when I'm a mean, old, cranky man in an old folks home, that she will bring me food. So I, I dote on her a little bit more. She loves to sing, um, loves to dance. She loves to write songs. She plays the piano, plays the guitar. She plays basketball. She made two points last season. I have it on video. It's incredible. It was a minor miracle that that ball went in the hoop. It was amazing. And uh, as soon as the ball went in the hoop, uh, she stopped to fix her ponytail. So she... Uh, She's told me that in a few years, when she's a singer, she'll just use my bus. So, yeah. But I love those babies. And my wife and I, we lost a little girl named Julia Grace. And um, it's, it's hard to believe that'll, that'll be that's seven years ago. And, um, you know, uh, it was a tough, we lost her shortly after she was born. And uh, that was a tough, it was a tough ordeal. I mean, all these years later, it's still tough. It's just. She's a part of our story. And, uh, you know, I held her as she slipped away. And, and that really rocked my boat pretty good for a long time. And, uh, but we still talk about her because that's, you know, that's, that's little sister. I didn't realize this till after we lost her, but it feels good when people will come up to me and ask about her, you know? So when I, um, I'm, when I'm around someone who has lost a loved one, rather than be hesitant and not say anything, to talk about them, that brings people more comfort than you know, because you're acknowledging their existence and it helps their memory live on. It's good for the heart. Aaron strives to stay real with his fans as he shares the pains and the joys throughout the seasons of his life. He is excited for this season to bring joy to the world with his next project, an Aaron Watson family Christmas. So we made a Christmas record this summer in Texas, July, 105 outside. And uh, literally we would go outside and we'd swim for a while and we'd dry off, eat lunch. Then we would record vocals 
in my wife's closet because it just sounded like a sound booth in her closet. I think it's all the hanging clothes and purses and shoes, you know. It just had this, I went throughout the house clapping and singing and I was like, ooh, this is where we're gonna be singing vocals. I love those J-I-N-G-L-E bells. We made the best memories. I mean, I was like a stern NFL football coach. I mean, I was going to get their best performances, you know, and you have to treat them all different. But they did so good. And of all the projects I've ever made, this might be the one I'm most excited about. I mean, it turned out to be something that just was magical. It turned out to be magical. Um, we sang some classics. We sang some originals. Um, my wife sang, uh, you know, Baby It's Cold Outside with me. And she just has this like, the sweetest little voice, like sounds like one of the girls from the 1930s, like sings real soft and airy. And um, the boys sang, you know, you know, Rudolph and Santa Claus is coming to town. Probably my favorite track is Jolie Kate singing uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas song, Christmas Time is Here. And it is amazing. I mean, her little voice, she just, sang her heart out. But then during the solo, where we, we had the area for the solo, we decided to have Jack, you know, little brother Jack, read the meaning of Christmas that Linus read on stage, you know, in front of Charlie Brown. Um, you know, Charlie Brown was upset because his tree had withered and he was like, Charlie Brown, that's, not the meaning of Christmas, and and we had Jack read the same thing, and Jack actually sounds like Linus. So Jolie sings it, and it goes into the solo, and you hear Jack say, and there were shepherds, and it's amazing. I mean, you're gonna, you, you hear that, and it's just going to bring you tears of joy. I mean, this album, it's 10 songs, and I truly feel like it captures the essence of Christmas. You know, there's songs about the birth of Jesus. Uh, my buddy, Drew Womack, wrote this song called She Stared at Him All Night, and it's the most brilliant song I've ever heard. And it's just this song from the perspective of Mary, Jesus' mama. Like, she just stared at him at all. And it's such a beautiful song. I mean, literally, while I'm singing it in my closet, I'm getting choked up singing it. Like, I had to call Tom out. I came walking out of the closet. My wife was like, are you all right? And I was like, no. I'm getting emotional in there, you know? And I actually loved, I loved singing Christmas songs during the summer. I thought it was gonna be weird, but it made me happy. Because those songs are full of joy and love giving. So I cannot wait for everyone to get this album. You know, I think it's important during Christmas that you, while there's trees and there's presents, I think it's important to make Jesus the sole focus of Christmas. And it's, it's, it's the birth of Jesus, but when, when you talk about the birth of Jesus, you, you're talking about the beginning of his life and, and the journey, and which leads into the lessons and the footsteps, you know, which leads him to the cross. So I love that. It, it, it keeps you focused on the true meaning of Christmas. And, uh, and I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, I, I, I try to have a balance of my schedule, you know, like three or four days on the road, come home for three or four days. I try to keep it balanced. 
and really, you know, where I'm probably gone 150 days a year, which it is a lot, sounds like a lot, but then there's that 210 days where I'm home. And when I'm home, I'm really home. Like, it's like I'm at my kid's disposal. Like, what do you want from me today? And, and it really, it's kind of a constant battle, you know, where I finally have to make myself and, and a lot of people that I'm working with just know, like, no, I have been gone for five days. I, I, have to, I have to deal with my home life because if things unravel here, the business will unravel shortly thereafter. But it's a struggle, you know, and, and obviously, you know, I, I have a passion um, not just for my family but my faith. And, and I, I'm quick to tell people that the reason why I need Jesus is because I'm probably more screwed up than you. You know, I think there's this, um, a lot of people think, oh, well, you're a Christian. You know, like, oh, you're a goody two-shoe. Well, I am not a goody two-shoe. Now, my wife is, you know, but I'm not. And, and that's why I need that constant reminder that I need to stay focused on my faith and my family. And a lot of times I have to hit the reset button. But that's the beauty of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. I mean, if you believe in Jesus and you believe that he gave his life for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, then you understand that what he did for you is, is his love is bigger than any mistake you'll ever make. And no matter what that mistake is, because of what he did for us, you... He's given you this gift of forgiveness and there's mercy. And, and that's that restart button, you know? That's, that's hitting your knees in prayer when you're on your, feeling like you're hanging on by a thread and just asking God to forgive you and to give you courage to get back up and keep moving forward. So, you know, I'm a roller coaster ride. You know, if I sat here and told you that I had it all together, that would be a big lie. And I just can't handle, I cannot handle that kind of um, pressure of people looking at me like I have it all together. And I think it's false advertisement. The artist, Macklemore, you know, he's had, he struggled with drug addiction. And, um, you know, people were really praising him for that. And he relapsed. And he apparently he kept it kind of hidden for a while. But then he just couldn't do it, and he was upfront, honest about it. And him just being honest about it let all those people who are been, who are struggling with that it gave them hope, you know, that hey, it's all right, you know, you're you're gonna be all right. And and I think that's I think that's what Jesus gives us is hope. It's one thing I loved about Johnny Cash is man, Johnny Cash, he loved Jesus, and uh, he he really. He really had a lot of struggles, a lot of addictions. Um, and for me, I'm really inspired by his story because he constantly kept getting back up and moving forward. I love Billy Graham. I've read a lot of his books. Man, he had it all together. I mean, just such a role model. I can relate a little bit more to Johnny Cash, you know, and um, but the same thing like the Apostle Paul talks about, for which I am the worst. You know, those are those are verses that I cling to because I'm like, man, when I'm feeling down the dumps, like, you know, everybody in this day and age puts on their puts their best foot forward. Every photo has a filter on it. You know, it just kind of is what it is. But um, like I, on my new record that I just recorded, I wrote this song called Trying Like the Devil. And I wrote the song um, after I saw a post that a dad made. A, a dad, his son had committed suicide, and he was talking about the letter that his son left behind. And his son just didn't feel like he was good enough. And his dad said, I really wish artists out there would be more honest about their imperfections. He said, I wish people posting things on Facebook and Instagram wouldn't be so um, fake. He said, we, we, we only post good things or we post hateful comments. It's interesting. 
it's an interesting uh, dynamic. It's damaging. So I wrote this song, Trying Like the Devil, and it's just all my struggles. And, and it's just like, I want people to hear that song. And I want them to, if they're having a bad day, go, hey, it's okay. I'm all right. I'm a little screwed up. We all are. If, they, if someone says they aren't, then give them a little time. It's tough. As, as a Christian in this world, it's tough. But that is one thing that I really do feel. Like, you know, people have said, well, do you feel like God, you know, speaks to you or this or that? And I'm like, he has never said one word to me. I have felt his presence at times. But like when we lost our daughter, I felt something come over me after she, after she left this world. I felt this sense of relief that she's okay now. And I can't explain that. But it's also the same feeling that if I've been a complete idiot at home and I'm being rude to my wife and I'm not being a good husband and I'm just carrying that burden around, when I finally swallow my pride and I hit my knees and I genuinely ask God to help me and to forgive me, I feel that burden lifted off me. I mean, that is real, you know? I mean, and that's, that's something that, to feel something just immediately changing you like that. I mean, that's, that's real. Uh, when we were playing in Manchester in England, uh, a lady came up to me and she had um, my signature tattooed on her wrist. And I always put Psalms 118, 14. The Lord is my strength and my song. He's become my salvation. She had that tattooed on her because she said that um, she came to see my show and she said she was in a bad place and she just didn't want to continue with life. And after I gave my story and shared my testimony, she said she went home and she looked up that Bible verse that I wrote and she said that changed her life. And I was like, man, that's, that, that, there's the power in the Word of God. It wasn't really what I said. It was that Bible verse. She opened up that book and it changed her life. To learn more about Aaron's latest album, An Aaron Watson Family Christmas, visit AaronWatson.com. Jesus Calling is proud to premiere Aaron's new music video for She Stared at Him All Night, a new original song from An Aaron Watson Family Christmas. To watch the premiere, please go to JesusCalling.com and click the video tab at the top of the page. Next time on Jesus Calling Stories of Faith, we visit with Christian artist and songwriter David Crowder. After years of massive success with the David Crowder Band, David shares why the band made a decision to part ways during one of their most prolific seasons. If you didn't have the economy of faith, it makes no sense because in the economy that we're breathing in and out every day, we were right where you sh you'd worked really hard to be. Um, but what our values were, were um, I care, I would, I would rather my wife uh, be next to me <laughs> and thrilled and happy and full of life than, um, you know, have a, have a number one record. Thank you for watching Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. Be sure to join us every first and third Sunday of each month for a new Jesus Calling Story of Faith, debuting live on the Jesus Calling Facebook page. You can also find our stories on the Jesus Calling YouTube channel and on Instagram's IGTV through the Jesus Calling Instagram page. Be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling YouTube channel by going to youtube.com slash Jesus Calling Book so you can be notified when a new story of faith is available.